Good evening and happy Easter this evening as well. And we just got done watching the Synod's Easter service, which was very nice. The sermon was very, very good as well um, as we listened to it. Tonight, it is Caleb's pick for him, and he has picked him 143. He's risen, he's risen. Um, what verses were they? Please one. Just the first verse? Yeah. Just the first verse of this particular hymn. Verse 1 of hymn 143. Ready? He's risen, he's risen, Christ Jesus the Lord. He opened death's prison, the incarnate word. Break forth, hosts of heaven, in jubilant song. And earth, sea, and mountain, the praises prolong. All right. We are on chapter 28 of the book of Matthew as we read our way through um, the Passion history, basically. Um, and now we have come to the events of the resurrection, fitting for Easter. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to, the, to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and, going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. While the women were on their way, some of the guards went into the city and reported to the chief priests everything that had happened. When the chief priests had met with the elders and devised a plan, they gave the soldiers a large sum of money, telling them, You are to say his disciples came during the night and stole him away while we were sleeping. If this report gets to the governor, he, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So the soldiers took the money and did as they were instructed. And this story has been widely circulated, even among the Jews, to this very day. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, to the very end of the age. A little ascension in there as well. All right. Um, it was a little bit shorter reading tonight, so maybe we can just go around the room and, and say what about the passion history that we read the last several days kind of stands out at us. Marcus? Jesus. Okay, we do see the love of our God, don't we? Yeah, goes through a lot, all for you and for me. Is? That, um, Judas realizes what he has done, and instead of repenting, he goes and hangs himself. Yeah, there's a very interesting study between Judas, who despairs and hangs himself, right? And then Peter, who also disowns Jesus, Jesus, but repents of his sin and ultimately runs back to his Lord, right? And there's forgiveness there. If only Judas would have done the same, right? Um, mm -hmm. Two very different outcomes. Uh, Caleb. 
It's just strange to think about the emotional roller coaster that the disciples and the people at the tomb had to go through from being with Jesus to having no Jesus to being back with Jesus again. But there you go. Um, Pastor Trepo kind of talked about that in the sermon, didn't he, today? A little bit. That fog that they were all probably in because of it. But yeah, a lot changes so very, very quickly over the course of a few days, right? Um, yeah, must have been an emotional roller coaster. Caitlin? Something I always have kind of thought about is how kind of just unbelievable the story is that they made for the soldiers at the tomb. Like, they were sleeping and the disciples came. Yeah. If you're sleeping, you don't know who comes. Right. And you're not supposed to be sleeping on the job. Yeah, and it's a whole guard, right? It's not just one guy. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So that they were all just asleep and these fishermen were able to outsmart the Roman guard that was placed at the tomb. Yeah. Kind of far-fetched. Yeah. Resta? Easter's always been my favorite season. And even though I've missed everything at church, it it doesn't change the fact that Easter's still Easter. He still came, he still died, he still rose again. And the forgiveness that I have because of it is still there. Yeah. Amen. Right. Um, it's all still very true. And whether we're walking through church smelling all the flowers or not. Um, yeah. Very good. Very good. There's just so much to contemplate and think about throughout the passion history and Jesus resurrection and all the rest of it. So many sermons to preach and so many things to focus on. I, I don't know if one thing really stands out for me um, other than really kind of what Marcus has said and, and what all of you have said, really, um, that we have a God who really does love us, who who really does forgive us. All of this really truly happens, right? We have all these accounts of, of so much comfort, emotional roller coasters and all the rest um, that stick with us in this time, especially in this time in our history. And when we kind of find ourselves in such a weird place too, um, where we're not able to go to church. And yet Jesus is still here with us every day, guarding and protecting his people, loving us, making sure our sin has been forgiven and that heaven remains our home and that's something that's worth rejoicing in every day of our lives. So a lot here, right, for us to contemplate and think about um, as, well, really all the writers from here on out do. Um, Paul, as we're thinking about Philippians right now, goes back to all this stuff and is still thinking about it. And today, we go back to these very truths and still contemplate and think about them too, right? Yeah. May God bless all of you as well as you think about these words and, and contemplate all of the various things that no doubt jump out at every single one of you. We'll pray. Dear Jesus, please, please help, help Caitlin, Caleb, Caleb, Izzy, Marcus, Mommy, Daddy, and all we know and love have a good night's sleep. Help them to fall asleep and sleep all the way through the night and wake up happy and healthy. In your name we pray. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God bless. Happy Easter. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Happy Easter. <laughs>